Government handouts have increased. Texas leads in job creation. And Trump media worth more than X. Today, I read an interesting article on ZeroHedge.com, written by Tyler Durden, likely a pseudonym for writers at Zero Hedge. Title, Americans More Dependent Than Ever on Government Handouts, New Report States. The author of this article referenced a report by the Economic Innovation Group, which is a public policy research organization. The report is called The Great Transfer Nation. It indicates that Americans have become substantially more dependent on government support, with the share of national income coming from transfer payments more than doubling over the past 50 years. Transfer payment programs include Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, unemployment, and disability, along with food stamps and veteran benefits. Transfer payments were 8% of U.S. total income in 1970. They are now 18% today. Here are my thoughts. This is a sad state of affairs here in America. What's scary is how much this is costing our government. The government already is dealing with a massive amount of national debt. How long can these obligations remain sustainable, especially with a large segment of our population getting older? If transfer payments increased from 8% in 1970 to 18% today, where does this stop? It is really quite scary to think about. Now, I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. The first commenter said, the government wants all Americans dependent on government to justify expansion of the welfare state and more importantly, to control you. Control every aspect of your life from what you eat to what you drive and what you're allowed to say. The next commenter said, I hope they include it, all the government employees into the statistics of those receiving government handouts. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, I didn't give the U.S. government permission to transfer parts of my paycheck to Social Security for 40 years. But when they transfer my money back to me, that makes me some sort of leech. I'm curious, what do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now here is some good news. I read this on foxbusiness.com, written by Breck Dumas, titled, Texas Leads U.S. in Job Creation Over Past Year. According to the author, Employment numbers released by the BLS this week show Texas has seen the largest job gains of any state from September 2023 to September 2024, adding 327,400 jobs. California came in with 265,300 jobs added over the past year. Florida was number three at 204,700. Here are my thoughts. This is great news for Texas in some ways. However, I'm sure some locals may not like it. This means more congestion on the roads, more people at stores, and I'm sure this has driven the price of real estate up. That's great for people who already own a lot of real estate, but not so good for young people just starting out. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. The first commenter said, Texans and Texas will always succeed despite the best efforts of the federal government and DOJ. It's our DNA. The next commenter said, no surprise, red states are pro-growth, blue states are pro-job-killing regulation. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, Texas is a red state and they may lead the nation in job creation, but California leads the nation in companies and jobs leaving their state for Texas. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now here's a story that really caught me off guard today. I read this on foxbusiness.com, written by Sarah Rumpf Witten, titled, Truth Social Parent Company Trump Media Now Worth More Than Elon Musk's X As Election Day Nears. According to the author, Trump Media and Technology Group is now valued at over $10 billion after its shares more than quadrupled since late September. X Holdings is valued at around $9.4 billion. Here are my thoughts. If Trump gets elected president again, I suspect the value of his company could continue to increase, especially if he uses it regularly for communication with the public. 
I'm not sure why he didn't create a whole host of social media platforms, such as TrumpTube instead of YouTube, TrumpBook instead of Facebook, and TrumpGram instead of Instagram. It will be really interesting to see what happens moving forward. I feel like a lot of companies are overvalued right now, especially in tech. If a day of reckoning ever comes, I think some people could get wiped out. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on YouTube. Now I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'm going to share some of them with you. One of the commenters said, the short sellers of DJT are out on the window ledges of Wall Street. Another person said, no they aren't because the crash will happen after he loses. I'm curious, what do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now this next article was interesting. I read this on foxbusiness.com, written by Aislinn Murphy, titled, Subway Accused of Shorting Customers on Meat in Sandwiches. According to the author, Subway was hit with a lawsuit on Monday, claiming they overstate the amount of meat in visual ads for sandwiches. The woman who filed the suit paid $7.61 for a steak and cheese sandwich, not realizing Subway's ads showed a sandwich containing at least 200% more in meat than she and other customers would receive. The lawsuit accuses the chain of using similar tactics for many other sandwiches. Well, my friends, I think this probably happens at a lot of different restaurants. The pictures always look better. It reminds me of the scene in the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas. He is at a place called Whammy Burger and he gets upset by how his squished burger looks compared to the thick and juicy burger featured on the picture above the counter. If you've never seen that movie, it is really interesting and depressing at the same time. You'll be feeling depressed about how bad our society is after watching it. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. The first commenter said, pick your poison. There's not one picture of any fast food outlet product that looks like what you get when you're at the counter. The next person said, Subway has always done this. I quit going there years ago for this reason. The pictures you see of their sandwiches and advertisements never look anything like what you get when you order in the store. They will never tell you that in the store either. You basically get a slab of bread with almost nothing inside. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, if anyone has purchased a sandwich at Subway lately, they know that they don't look anything like those beefed up beauties that you see in the TV ads. Total false advertising. Won't ever go back. You're better off making your own from scratch. I'm curious, what do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.